Namaste and good day. When it comes to understanding uh, Hinduism or Vedic culture, some people think that, that it's very difficult to understand. But if you look at it succinctly, it's not very difficult at all. Uh, of course, Hinduism is also more correctly called by its Sanskrit name, Sanatana Dharma. This essentially means to follow one's eternal duty, which is to search for and understand our spiritual identity, and then to learn to live according to those eternal and spiritual characteristics. This is also the purpose and mission of uh, Vedic culture and philosophy. The Vedic philosophy, or that which is based on the ancient Vedas and its supporting literature of India, is to help humanity understand who we really are and the purpose of life. It is like the manual you get when you buy an appliance uh, and need to understand exactly how it works. The Vedic literature is there to help us all understand how to do that. The essence of it comes down to ten basic principles. These are the ones most accepted by the majority of people who follow Sanatana Dharma and are also referenced in the Vedic text. Beyond these, there are various schools of thought which have further developments in their own outlook and philosophy, such as the Shaivites, the Vaishnavas, Shaktas, Brahmanandis, Tantrics, and so on. These we can discuss at another time, or you can even read more about them in my books or website for further information. In any case, the first code is, there is one supreme being, or Bhagavan or God, with no beginning or end, the all in all, the unlimited absolute truth, who can expand into many forms. In this regard, the Rig Veda, Book 1, Chapter 164, Verse 45 says, Ekam Sat Vipra Bahuda Vedanti. Though sages may call him by different names, such as Krishna, Rama, or Vishnu, etc., depending on its, the qualities or pastimes you are referred to, there is but one absolute truth, or source and foundation of everything. God is also considered to be Satchitananda Vigraha, or the form of eternal knowledge and bliss. He is supreme, full of beauty, knowledge, is all-powerful and all-pervading. He is also known by his three main features, and these are namely Brahman, the all-pervading impersonal spiritual force or effulgence, the Paramatma, the localized expansion known as the Supersoul which accompanies every individual soul in the heart of everyone, and then Bhagavan, or the supreme personality and form of God. The other principles are, number two, the Vedas are divine knowledge and are the basis or foundation of the Vedic philosophy. And some of these texts are spoken directly by God, are given by God as well, and others were composed by sages in their deepest superconscious state in which they were able to give revelations of universal truths while in meditation on the Supreme. This Vedic literature, including some other texts, which include the Rig, Sama, Yajur, and Atharva Vedas, the Upavedas, the Vedangas, the Siddharshans, uh, the Upanishads, the Vedanta Sutras, Yoga Sutras, the Agamas, uh, the Ramayan, the Mahabharata, and Bhagavad Gita, and all Puranic literature and the practices congruent with them contain the basis of the Vedic or Sanatana Dharma spiritual culture. Point number three is that God can and has appeared throughout history in the form of personal appearances or avatars within the realm of matter and even in the sound vibration of scriptures, the Vedic literature. And there are ten basic avatars of God with numerous other expansions. Point four is that our real identity is being a spirit soul, or jiva as it's called in Sanskrit. Five, <clears throat> the soul undergoes its own karma, which is the law of cause and effect, by which each person must experience the results or consequences of his or her activities and creates his own destiny based on his thought, words, and deeds. Point six is there is also rebirth or reincarnation, wherein our next birth is directed by our karma. The soul incarnates through different forms until it reaches liberation or moksha from the repetition of birth and death when it attains its natural position in the spiritual domain. Principle 7 is that we can elevate ourselves spiritually by different means such as engaging in worship of the divine such as in his forms of, as deities in the temple. Principle 8 is that we can receive proper instruction on how to follow the teachings of the Vedic philosophy from an authorized guru or teacher who is in line with the genuine parampara or line of gurus. We should also follow particular principles for our uh, own spiritual development, such as ahimsa or nonviolence and other points which I'm presenting here. Uh, principle 10 is that in our life there are four main goals 
as indicated by the four ashrams of life, such as being a brahmachari or being a student, the grihastha uh, ashram or the householder stage of life, and then the vanaprastha or retired stage of life in which we take our spiritual goals more seriously, and then the renounced or sannyas stage of life in which uh, our spiritual purpose is the main focus, culminating in attaining moksha or liberation from any further material existence. These ten principles can expand to include several other additional points, such as 1. The Vedic tradition is more than a religion, but a way of life, a complete philosophy for the foundation and direction of one's existence. 2. It is based on universal spiritual truths that can be applied by anyone at any time. 3. The Vedic tradition recognizes that the individual soul is eternal, beyond the limitations of the body, and that one soul is no different than another. 4. All living entities, both human and otherwise, are the same in their essence uh, and divine spiritual being. All of them are parts of the eternal truth and have appeared in this world to express their nature and also to gather experience in the realms of matter. 5. For this reason, Vedic followers accept the premise of Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, that all living beings in the universe comprise one family and that as such all beings are spiritually equal and should be respected as members within that family of the Supreme. 6. The ultimate purpose of human life is to shed all attachments to matter and attain moksha or liberation and return to the transcendental realm which is not only our true nature but also our real home. 7. Every person's capacity to progress spiritually depends upon their personal qualities, choices, and abilities, and is not limited by the circumstances of one's color, caste, class, body type, or any other circumstance of birth or temporary material limitations or designation. 8. The Vedic path is based on regaining our natural spiritual identity. To pursue this goal, all human beings have the eternal right to choose their personal form of spiritual practice, as well as the right to reject any form of religious activity, and that coercion, forced conversion, or commercial inducement should never be used or tolerated to present, propagate, or enforce one's spiritual beliefs on others. 9. The Vedic path offers personal freedom for one to make his own or his or her own choice of how he or she wants to pursue their spiritual approach and what level of the absolute truth he or she wishes to understand. This is the height of spiritual democracy and freedom from tyranny. 10. Recognizing the value and sanctity of all forms of life as well as the eternal divine being that is their true self, the Vedic principle is that we should therefore strive in every possible way to peacefully coexist with all other species of living entities. 11. The Vedic path consists of ten general rules of moral conduct, which can also be found in many other uh, religions as well, or similarly in at least, and these are composed of five for the inner purity called yamas, and these include satya or truthfulness, ahimsa or non-injury to others, and treating all beings with respect, asteya or no cheating or stealing, brahmacharya or celibacy, and aparigara or no selfish accumulation of resources for one's own purpose. The five rules of conduct for external purification are the niyamas, such as socha or cleanliness and purity of mind and body, tapas or austerity and perseverance, swadhyaya or study of the Vedas and self-analysis, and santosh or contentment as well as acceptance of the supreme truth. 12. Uh, there are also 10 qualities that are the basis of dharmic or righteous life. Now these include driti or firmness of fortitude, kshama, which is forgiveness, dhamma, self-control, asteya, refraining from stealing or dishonesty, uh, soch, purity, indriya, nigraha, which is control over the senses, the d, which is intellect, vidya, attaining knowledge, satyam, truth, and akrota, the absence of anger. So these principles are part of the eternal universal truths that apply equally to all living entities who can use them for progress regardless of caste, class, nationality, gender, or any other temporary qualifications. These basic principles, as you can find, are universal in nature and, as we can see, are not so difficult to understand and are the basis 
of Vedic spiritual life. By following these, definitely, you'll make much spiritual progress. So, good luck with that, and thank you very much. Namaste. Jai Shri Krishna.